Hi folks, Jake Von Slat here. If you've been watching my videos, you saw the uh, recent one I posted uh, about the welder. And um, uh, to complete that welder, I needed a pulley about 8 inches in diameter, 6 groove pulley, uh, to work with an automotive alternator. And um, it's kind of an unusual size uh, for uh, automotive uh, components and um, the sorts of like crank pulleys you can get aren't really meant to go on a shaft like I needed to, to go on. Uh, so I found myself uh, uh, in a position where I, I needed this particular kind of pulley and I couldn't, I couldn't buy it inexpensively off the shelf. So I decided to see if I could uh, cast one out of aluminum. Um, now what was tricky about this pulley is it was it was fairly complicated and I don't have a lathe so building a uh, a blank um, uh, to cast a pulley uh, uh, from uh, building a model for a mold uh, would be a little little difficult without the lathe and in fact since it's a one-off thing if I had a lathe I would have just turned a pulley on the lathe um, so what I decided to see if I could do is 3D print it in plastic and then use an investment casting method uh, to make a mold that I could pour the molten aluminum in. And that ultimately was successful and I was able to make a pulley that uh, is, is mounted on the, uh, the welder right now. Uh, so I started by looking online for, uh, for models for six groove pulleys. Um, nothing on Thingiverse, uh, but I did find um, that uh, there were pulleys similar to what I wanted on, uh, on McMaster Car's site, uh, but they were um, they were too narrow. Uh, it was a six groove pulley, but for it was for a much smaller gauge belt, but it's essentially the set, the uh, correct geometry. Uh, so what I did was I, I went to the McMaster Car page and I downloaded the step format uh, file, uh, saved that to my computer, um, and then I brought that into Autodesk 123D and I simply used the scale function to increase the vertical size to uh, the vertical size in this image. Uh, uh, but of course, uh, um, uh, the, the width of the pulley is what I'm talking about uh, to the size that I needed. And because the geometry stayed consistent as I scaled that up, I got the right uh, distance between the uh, the particular groups, uh, grooves, and I had the uh, um, I had the geometry that I that I needed in a 3D model that I could then bring into uh, uh, the 3D printer control software and print out a plastic model. Um, now this I printed in uh, PD, uh, PLA. Uh, PLA is probably the best plastic for this sort of thing because it's it's nice and dimensionally stable. It prints nice and flat. Uh, it's a nice rigid plastic. Um, the one trouble that I had was with these fine overhangs. Uh, you know, this was printed flat on the bed like this, and the grooves would would curl over because I would, I would print them and they would be, the plastic would be hot and it would slowly settle. So the, uh, um, so the grooves were, uh, uh, excuse me just a moment. Okay, there we go. Um, so the grooves would be slightly bent over. Uh, so what I found is I had to cut my print speed down to like a half or a third of what it normally uh, would be and turn on the fan so that I would get these nice clean grooves. So I printed out the first of these and 
I created a sprue to uh, 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 control the, the path of the molten aluminum. Uh, and I then put the whole thing in what's called a flask. It's basically just a container for plaster. And then I mixed a batch of plaster with perlite, which is a, an expanded uh, uh, mineral product. Uh, it strengthens the plaster. Uh, it, it also provides some additional insulation against the heat. Um, and I poured the plaster around the mold and let it cure. And then that mold went into a, uh, a kill and the temperature was slowly ramped up about 200 degrees every half hour uh, to uh, about 1200 degrees Fahrenheit and then held at 1200 degrees Fahrenheit and then ramped back down to I think about 900 degrees. So the goal here is to melt and then burn out all of the PLA plastic and uh, then um, cool the mold slightly so that it's slightly cooler than the pouring temperature of the molten aluminum. Uh, so the first uh, test that I did, um, I cast the uh, plastic in the mold and poured the mold. Everything worked great, but uh, and this is the part that I got out of it. Um, but I got some cracking in the mold. And you can see the cracks around the edge and some cracks in the bottom. And that caused the uh, aluminum to leak out. So I have some hollows where the aluminum wasn't completely uh, uh, full. Um, so this was. Uh, but you can see the, the detail is, is quite crisp, the grooves are, are, are nicely formed, and you can even see a lot of the artifacts of the 3D printing in the, in the aluminum piece. So this was very encouraging, but, um, but not good enough to use. Uh, so I surmised that the, the holes that I, could create, that I created in the pulley, uh, uh, that the pulley was a bit too fancy. Uh, so I redesigned the pulley with uh, fewer sharp edges, uh, no through holes, more rounded features, because what I really needed was the stability of this surface and diameter here, and the ridges for the belt, and, and nothing else really mattered. So I redesigned the pulley, uh, uh, created another uh, um, uh, test piece and poured this pulley. Uh, this one came out much better. I didn't have cracking in the mold like I did. It's a, a, it's a very nice clean casting. Uh, the ridges are nice and clean but see all these little bumps here in the ridges? Those are bubbles. Those are bubbles that uh, uh, formed in the plaster. Uh, so, my next try, I mixed up a batch of just straight plaster without uh, uh, any perlite in it, and I painted that on to the plastic part, and I covered the plastic part with that plaster before I embedded it in the flask and poured the rest of the plaster over. And that resulted in this casting. And this casting, this casting is really quite good. That this is probably a usable piece. Uh, it's nice and flat. It's uh, uh, dimensionally what it's supposed to be. Uh, this surface is nice and clean, um, and the uh, and the V grooves are are nice and clean and don't have those little bubbles in it. Uh, this is this is probably a really good part. But you notice the the surface uh, finish. Uh, it looks kind of rough. That's because this is uh, a, a porous casting. And what I learned was that um, uh, aluminum, when it's molten, readily picks up hydrogen from any water that may be in the in the environment of the furnace. And uh, my furnace 
is stored outside and um, picks up moisture in the refractory material in the furnace. So uh, that apparently that moisture was getting into the aluminum, dissolving into the aluminum, the hydrogen was dissolving into the aluminum, and then as the aluminum uh, 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 cooled and hardened, uh, it was making little bubbles. So I was getting like this aluminum foam instead of nice solid castings. Uh, so what I did there, I, I did a couple of things to remedy that. Um, I made a, a wand that was a, a steel tube with a bunch of small holes in the end, and I hooked that up to a uh, cylinder of uh, welding gas, MIG gas, which is like 80% argon and 20% and carbon dioxide or somewhere like that. And once I brought the aluminum up to temperature, I bubbled the argon uh, uh, through the aluminum, and that's supposed to drive out any dissolved hydrogen. Uh, I also ran the furnace for a long time to uh, drive out any moisture that was in the walls in the refractories, and then I preheated everything that went into the crucible, uh, and I heated uh, the aluminum slowly and held it uh, at the temperature where just where it turns to a liquid for as long as it was practical and that is apparently supposed to also drive out the uh, uh, the hydrogen that's in the solution and that gave me the final pulley and that is the pulley that is installed on the welder and it works perfectly so I am really excited about this technique uh, because it lets me essentially 3D print a part in plastic and then with not a whole lot of effort turn it into a usable aluminum part and uh, given the number of, uh, of um, three mo 3D three models that are uh, out there for the internet uh, I foresee a great deal of utility in this new technique. Um, and I guess that's all for now. This is Jake Von Slatt, and I'll see you next time.